Okay, what is at the heart of communication in general? We are basic, we need stuff, okay? We all have needs and we communicate because we need stuff. So, in the textbook, it talks about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, it states that we have five different types of needs and we can't really move on to the next set of needs until we meet the first one. So you've probably seen this in your psychology classes, your sociology classes, anthropology classes. Those are all like sister sciences of communication. It was actually a subset of psychology until it branched off to be its own discipline X amount of years ago. So if some of the theories are looking familiar in the first few chapters, that's fine. That we share from a lot of the same core foundational theories. So Coming back to Maslow, we've got our physical needs. That's like food, water, shelter. So that's like when a baby is hungry, what's it do? It cries, right? We all, or if you're an adult, you say, I'm hungry, right? We have ways that we communicate needs and we communicate to other people because we need them to help fulfill our needs. So safety needs, it's like once you have a shelter, you want to protect it, right? That's why you see like ADT stickers in people's windows at their houses that shows that they have a security system. That's their nonverbal way of communicating that they are trying to protect that. Or I guess carrying a gun is also in this same realm of like trying to protect your person. You're communicating to other people that you're trying to keep this secure. So just a couple examples there. For belonging, these are also known as self, uh, I think self esteem needs. Nope, so belonging means that we want to be around other people and we want to belong to a tribe and we just want to feel a sense of belonging. So no person is an island, right? You've probably heard that phrase. It's very much true. We're, we're designed, like we have a sophisticated language that we are able to use. It's proof because we're designed to be communicating with one another. So we do have a sense of belonging. I mean, there's always an exception to the rule if you wanna go live in the woods in Alaska and build yourself a cabin and live there alone forever, so be it. Self-esteem, we all have self-esteem needs, right? This is how advertising works. They're like, oh, hey, are you trying to work out and lose weight? Well, buy this magic pill and it'll help increase your self-esteem and how you feel about your body, right? You, you see that kind of stuff all the time because we all have these needs, right? So we wanna have these needs met. And finally, self-actualization, it's the biggest word and the smallest place to put it on this hierarchy. But that's like being all that you can be, achieving all of your dreams. So an issue I find with this theory, and this is something I encourage you all to do throughout the semester and bring these into your discussions, is to question certain theories. I feel like this is a very Western way of thinking. I feel like some people still have belonging and self-esteem needs even if they don't have access to uh, like clean water, right? Like if you're thinking about, for example, I lived in India for a while and I lived in a very small community and clean water was one of the biggest issues and people would spend hours a day like going to the water source, getting the water, toting the water back. So just kind of some of these things that we take for granted. So I think that is an issue with this. It is very westernized, but in general, the whole point of bringing this in is because we communicate, because we need stuff. So we have these rules or principles that guide interpersonal communication. So all interpersonal communication interactions can fall back into these four principles in one way, one way or another. So interpersonal communication conveys both content and relationship information. So content relates to the word spoken. So depending on how close you are to someone, you might have to use clearer direct communication, right? If I'm talking to you guys, I don't know you that well. So I'm gonna use very clear direct communication because I don't have inside jokes with you. I don't have like this relationship information that you would get by being closer to someone on that scale of intimacy. So I've got an example here, right? If you're really close friends with someone and you know someone's lying, you know, you might give them a look and that would be the relationship information that's being communicated there. So it's not just the content, the word spoken, it's also that unspoken relationship information. So it's really the more closer people are on the I, you, I, thou end of the spectrum, you probably have more relationship information and ways to communicate with them. 
Another principle of interpersonal communication is it can be intentional or unintentional. Most of what you say or do in an encounter will be seen as intentional, whether you mean to say it or not. That's why in the intro video, I encourage you guys, think before you speak, especially where in this, at least in our classroom, you have the opportunity to like think before you hit send or before you post something. But even in your lives with your family or your friends or your partners, whoever you interact with most, think about what you really want to say before you say it. Because whether you meant to say it or not, or whether it came out correctly or not, like you have the power to slow it down and to think before you speak. Or there's that too, right? Thinking about inter um, nonverbal communication. I am one of those people that if I'm not smiling, I look angry. I just can't help it. I was born that way. So I have to be a bit more aware of how I'm communicating nonverbally. Otherwise, people think I'm grumpy. I'm not grumpy. I'm happy. I am having a good time. So interpersonal communication is dynamic. No interactions ever the same. Even if you have, like, say you work in customer service and you interact with a hundred different customers, not every single one of those interactions is going to go the same. I know it has to be kind of quick, kind of snappy, get people out the door and get on to the next person. But in general, communication is very dynamic and it changes a lot. And it changes between people. It changes, uh, like, verbal language is evolving over time. There's lots of different ways that communication is dynamic, and we'll keep bringing this up throughout the semester. And then finally, ir interpersonal communication is irreversible. Once it leaves your mouth, you can't take it back. Just another reason to think before you speak, right? I love this little meme. I think that well, the first time I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the whole reason of like why interpersonal communication is irreversible. You can't unhear that main thing that someone said to you, even if they didn't mean it, right? Even if it was unintentional, you can't unhear it. And it's not, the relationship doesn't go back to the same, the person might not go back to the same after hearing that thing that they cannot unhear. Have a good week and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.